Nerfcast! I don't remember the year. I don't remember the month. I do remember the game. Dungeon Saga from Mantic Games landed on Kickstarter. Before we get into it, by the way, some introductions. I'm Johnny P. Hello. Biron is above me, as is Valdrick. My neighbor is extreme. It's a good neighbor. You know, he had a, whoa, he had a neighbor in his uh, last house, and uh, that guy seemed really cool. I wanted to be that guy. I couldn't be that guy. Um, before we get into it, Mike, let me ask you, were you with me in the infamous Ronnie reveal of the Dungeon Saga box? At Lou Malnati's Pizza in Schaumburg? No, no, no. Okay. So we're at an Adepticon. I don't, if anyone wants to look up the date of the Kickstarter, they can. I don't really care. I think it's 2015. Um, I think it is. So... I'm helping out with Mantic as a Pathfinder. What does it pay? Uh, less Zero. than nothing. Zero. Less than nothing, because you, you probably get sick while you're there. And uh, we're at Lou Malnati's. Ronnie's had a few too many. He's starting to let things, let things leak out. And I mean bodily functions, and I mean Mantic trade secrets. He pulls out of his knapsack a box. Um, I don't believe there was like a like an outside yet. I think it was a, a plain slip case with white, but he did pull out oh, oh, the book and the box and all these things fell on me. Um, I believe he pulled it out. And I'll tell you what, when you show a bunch of gamers that are hungry and thirsty and ready for thirst of Ronnie's trade secrets, you show them a fake book that's actually a box, Half of us jizzed at that moment. The other half jizzed later, immediately. But that was Ronnie's reveal of, we all knew what we were going to get. You know, when there was a Dungeon Saga Kickstarter, who here backed it, by the way? Okay. 75%. It was close to 50, but it turned to 75 with a, a recount, if you will. And... Uh, Ronnie's big thing for Mantic was I want to throw back kind of Warhammer Quest, Hero Quest, Dungeon Crawl. He said he didn't see any on the market. And of course there are some, but from miniature makers, he probably wanted to be like, hey, we got a thing. You know, Descent is a thing. They're not really in a dungeon all the time. They kind of got their own thing. Let's do that. So that was the kind of inception of it all. Um, I remember... Uh, doing demos of it at a Gen Con for people walking by. And it was like the first scenario, which is how do you move? How do you fight? And it was like, just, you know, just enough to wet the palate a bit to get some, to gauge some interest. But um, we're going to talk about the game itself, the gameplay itself, not like how to play. You can find that wherever on YouTube, um, our experience with it, what we like, what we don't like, all that kind of stuff on this episode of Zlurkast. Before we uh, delve into this dungeon, if you will. This shirt is a Zlurpcast TV shirt. You can get that at Zlurpcast.net. Uh, Death Path are where these characters are from. Scott Prime, the artist on there, did a great job. If you want to buy the game Death Path, look on eBay. Last few copies on this fucking planet available. All of them include the game mat. Right in there. It's a little more money. It's like when you include something, but then you up the price. So what's included? It's like that. Um, so when you play Dungeon Saga, there's really two or few different ways to, to play. Some people like to do a co-op mode where there isn't a dungeon master, or I think they call it an overlord in this game. Um, and that's fine. I don't prefer it that way. Do you guys prefer when you play dungeon crawl or co-op games? Do you prefer not having a bad guy? No. Yes. No. Biron? I don't really have a strong opinion. Okay. So we I, have, guess, we have one. I guess I'd prefer a big bad. Okay. We have a yes. We have a no. We have no opinion, but probably yes. 
Uh, I am also of the yes with Mike. Um, before we get into that extreme, why do you prefer the, um, if, there, if, if the option is there, not all games have the option, but if the option is there for a deck of some sort or a set of guidelines of, well, if this is happening, move people towards this person, why do you prefer that than a person playing that character? Because uh, it takes, I don't know, I feel like when you have a person playing that character, you have to trust them to not ruin things. Because they're they're like half okay. playing against you, half being a DM type character guiding the story along. So you don't want them to go too easy on you, but they they also go too hard on you, or if they're just boring to play against. I don't know. It just creates this element of I'm depending on you not to ruin my experience. So extreme plays with a lot of dicks. So that's colored his opinion. <laughs> well, my response would have been so. Let's say. You were, let's say you were the person. So you know you're not a dick. You know you're going to do it. Do you try to win? Yeah, you do. But is it like full on? No, you, you want to have a good time. That's what you would do. Correct? Yeah, and that kind of, even playing that role, I don't like, I'd much rather just be like, okay, I need to win. So that's what I'm going to do. But if I'm playing that role, then you have to like take that into consideration just for it. And also, if you don't, have, if you have a rule set that doesn't, require you to have someone controlling the big bads then you're not only opening up to co-op but solo play that's true um <laughs> there is an option in dungeon saga for solo play as well there's there's an ai deck there like a lot of games have now uh, i find that Mike, it, it is similar to D that you have your dungeon masters who try to quote unquote win and then you have your dungeon masters that see their role as a storyteller and a facilitator of fun we call them bottoms. <laughs> well, from people who play a lot of D&D in their role-playing games, I, I've never encountered the, the person trying to win. It, they're always a storyteller. I think there are some that relish like, the total party wipe. When we were playing as kids, there was that element. But that was like 81, 82 level D, you know, mm. D&D. Now it is evolve more to a community uh, storytelling type situation. So, and I, I learned that, you know, you gotta have the challenge, but you also have to work with these people too. And sometimes you gotta throw them a bone every now and then. So. Yeah, every once in a while you gotta be like, if I roll this, what I really rolled, the entire party is gonna die. Uh, yeah. No, I missed. It's kind of weird. Uh, um, oh, go ahead, Extreme, sorry. I guess kind of, it, just, feels to me too like when we're when we're talking about in a dungeon crawling game it kind of feels half-assed to me on the game like so you created this game but i have to have one of my friends come and actually run the game because you couldn't like couldn't make an ai smart it. enough yeah. that's, that's a fair point um you know if you know that going in maybe those kind of games aren't, aren't for you but um that that's a that's a fair point to look at it as in you've made the game but you didn't do 100%. So now it's like, it needs work. It's like buying a used car when you know something's wrong with it. Well, I'm gonna, get, it's gonna be great when I get this and this and this done. I, it's a valid point. Um, Mike, I wanna go in the time machine with you back. We played Warhammer Quest, um, probably like mid 2000s or so. And um, I, I started off running it, I think, and then I handed it over to you. Is that, or was it vice versa? No. Or you ran almost all of it. Okay, I ran out. Um, Did I and so you might have run one or two because I remember playing the Imperial Noble because I wanted to do the the dumb voice yeah. and I wanted to play a couple games. Um, Are you one thing. of those guys that does a voice for your character? I, I've never played you in a in a sort of role play environment, so I don't know. I I will if people want me. I'm just I was just having fun. I don't. You'll read the room and decide is what you'll do. Yeah, I I was okay. not in any plays plays in high school. I I'm, I'm I don't I can be that person if I want to be. But um, the reason why I'm bringing this up is so we played with the guy Steve, who was a nice guy. We played 40k with him a lot. Um, very competitive player in, in a lot in every game, um, and that's not a bad thing. I can tell there were a few times. He was getting a bit irritated when I was like shielding roles or saying, actually, that is a Minotaur Lord, and he's got 25 instead of 15 wounds. And it was it was bothering him because he's doing the math in his head. 
all I need is this on this guy, this on this guy. We do, it was, he was playing strategically it, as one would if they are that type of gamer in all facets of gaming. I was trying to say no, because I knew the barbarian's gonna rack up all the kills, yeah. get all the gold and all the stuff, and I was trying to spread the wealth. So I, that was bothering him, but the other two, the other three people, two people playing did not, did not bother him. They were, they were cool, great. Like, and you you let him play the barbarian, the the rules game. I mean, I didn't, didn't know, play I, didn't, barbarian. I didn't know it was going to be that way from the beginning, though. So yeah. I, we just said, "Who do you want to play?" He's like, "Barbarian." barbarian. I looked it you up. Know, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't know, um, but I also played Warhammer Quest when it came out in the '90s with a group of guys, and um, that was also a group that also played D and D. So there was a little more, "Hey, we're having fun here." It's, it's a right. relaxed environment. Just have some fun. And so I didn't, I never had the bad experience until then. It wasn't even, a, I don't even need to say a bad experience. I never had the, oh shit, I need to tweak it to make sure yeah. people are having fun here. Um, but once I realized I need to do that, I mean, I've done that in many other games later on. That's just kind of what you do. If you come to that realization that I'm here to make sure we, I'm the, I'm the party host. I'm, I'm here to make sure the food and the drinks and the music are all good in this party tonight. My fun is secondary. And so I'm okay doing that, which is why I also ran a bunch of tournaments. I guarantee you Mike is completely okay with doing that for the same reasons. We're, we're both of that same ilk, if you Bottom. will. Your bottoms. <laughs> Fine. Whatever. I don't give a shit. You know? I'm trying to put it in terms people that aren't familiar with games might understand. Because they're watching that. Watch yep. this. <laughs> in the literally ones and twos, they are. Yeah. yeah. Extreme has also run a bunch of events, yet he has the other opinion of, I'd rather, if I'm going to play a game, I'm going to play a fucking game. Like, if I'm going to sit behind a computer and tally up scores, fine, that's my role. Is that correct, Extreme, that you're, you don't want that taint, if you will. You don't want that, I'm neither balls nor ass. You, one or the other, whereas Mike and I have been the taint. I, I, I find, like I think a lot of gamers do, that I'm often in the role of facilitating games and kind of running games for like family members and stuff that come over that aren't gamers. So I do that a lot, but when it comes to like dungeon crawls, I'd much rather just be co-op with three other people and we're all working together to solve a puzzle or do something cool. Okay, that's a fair point. I think... There's a lot of really, really good board games that um, are great for co-op play, trying to achieve uh, scenarios. And then some, some people really love the hard ones. All right, it's our, it's our 10th time, guys. Let's, maybe we can save the world this time. Um, I, I actually hate that. I just, I don't, I feel like, um, I don't know, because how do I know we're gonna play again? I don't know, I just wanna feel like some shit was accomplished. So I like to further stuff. But there's some people, I mean, it, it, what's the big one? Like, is, is pandemic one where it's really hard? Yeah. You know, where it's... Pandemic's one just, where it's hard, and the one person who really knows how to play basically plays by themselves. Yeah, and tells you go here, you, you go here, you go here. No yeah, problem. I don't really, I don't like it as that much. But again, if that's what you're looking for, I want to play. I want, my, I want to play with my friends. You know, if we're playing a video game, and we're all, we're playing, you know, Gauntlet's, an old school dungeon crawl video game. That's what Extreme describes. That's what we're doing. You know? Um, Don't, so shoot yeah, I totally Don't shoot the food. Don't shoot the food. Warrior needs I, uh, food. I introduced the original Gauntlet to my kids recently, a couple weeks ago. On I have Nintendo? Like, well, it was on Dreamcast because I have like a Midway Collections pack. Okay. So we put that in and played it. and They all enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. Four of us running around. It's not classic. Is it a classic gauntlet or one of the newer ones? No, it was like old classic. Old classic. Okay. Original. So it wasn't that great of a game. Yeah, like so. Those... Gauntlet Legends is where I think it got good. Right? Yeah, but I like Gauntlet Legends a lot. I remember. They also saw the smile on Dad's face, so they knew how to act. Too. Pretend you like it. Right. <laughs> Come on. You know this is making his day. You just fucking smile. You know. Uh, um, I get it. So, Dungeon Saga, Ronnie wanted to introduce that into the mantic speed of games. So you have Kings of War already. You have, I think that's Dreadball were already out. And so you kind of had um, 
you know, once again, following that Games Workshop style of, we've got two product line settings. Here's going to be a fantasy one. And I, think, I, I really do believe that Ronnie, even from the, whenever they decided to say, we're going to start making real games and not just um, kind of, um, you know, models for other games. I really do believe he thought it was a good idea. And I'm not saying good or bad. I mean, I think it's a good idea to have, you got your battle game in each, in each universe. You got your skirmish game in each universe, your dungeon crawl in each universe, and your, I don't know, is there a fourth one? I guess board, I don't know. So say those three. You have the, you know, your, your small amount of models and then a bunch of bad guys, dungeon crawl, then your skirmish, building up from there. I guess sports game to an extent, but. Um, so he wanted to come out with kind of a retro dungeon crawl, a la Warhammer Quest or um, Hero Quest. So when you take off the slipcase, you got a cool looking box, you put it on your shelf. It, like people that come over are like, wow, like you are so well read. Like you, I mean, <laughs> stand, far, stand far away and don't wear your glasses, but you, you, you have successfully finished another tome. I'm like, yes, another one. What's this one called? Oh, it's a dungeon saga um, by, by, by the author oh, Mantic. Mantic. It's his pen name. His pen name is Mantic. Um, so when you open up the game, these are the these are kind of like the tiles that are in there. One thing that I am not a fan of in this game is the tiles do slide around when you set them up. So you should probably plan a mat that's like upside down or even, or even a regular mat, like not upside down, but just something to help. They came with these plastic things that connect them because in the Kickstarter, everyone was asking for them and they're not good. You don't, you shouldn't even use those at all. Either build your own board, use your own board, or just put it on something that doesn't stick, like the bottom, rubber side of the mouse pad. Um, but there's pretty good art on these. This is from the Abyssal one, I believe. And so you can kind of customize your adventures based on what the tiles look like. And inside the main box, you have your traditional characters. You've got your barbarian, you've got your wizard, you've got your dwarf, and your elf ranger. And they tweaked it a little bit. So the wizard is not an old wizard. We're going to go with a young one, kind of a little, little different. Um, that's kind of about it. I think the rest are pretty uh, stock. Um, and then inside the main box, you have mostly undead models because the Dwarf King's Quest is the initial adventure that comes in the main box. I believe. Wasn't that a, a game by itself initially, like one of the early games? It was, yeah. Um, Mike, did you ever play that one? I never did. No. Okay. It was. And I don't know anything about if it was different or not. Um, this one falls under the um, tight rule set Jake Thornton category for me, which is good. Very simple. I was able to demo it with, with ease at Gen Con and at, you know, game stores. Um, I mean, you basically, you move and then you do a thing. That's it. You know, you, you, your heroes have a phase. Monsters have a phase. That's, there, there isn't even, it's not even as complex as, all right, you get two actions. And then what do I, it's literally, no, no, no. You're going to move and do something. What if I don't move? Then you don't move. You do something. Uh, they made it so simple so you don't get bogged down. I will tell you that I rarely look at the rules for this game ever. Um, at the most, it's because someone has an ability and I forgot what the ability did. Um, and it was, may not have been on the card or something. Like you took it as you leveled up. That's it. Um, and even those, I, I know all those. So it's, it is like, it is at its base level, the easiest game to get kids or non-gamers into. At its most advanced level, it is like low level war gaming, like war gaming knowledge in that you, you're going to feel like you know everything. And that's great. Uh, um, some people love complexity in game, but I, I don't. And I love to be able to, I can make up my stories as I go along. Uh, the game itself has, I think, 10 missions, 10 scenarios. Uh, the first two are training. So first one is, I think, Barbarian and Dwarf to get you used to moving and fighting. Second one is Wizard and Elf, get you used to magic and shooting. And then the third scenario is the first real one. And you're going throughout trying to, you know, move to the next one, and you get to the end, and you're trying to take out the Necromancer, Mortibrus, that's in the box as well. By the way, the model looks like Christopher Lambert of Highlander fame as well, or also uh, Raiden from Mortal Kombat. Uh, looks just like him. Uh, it's a decent model. I think I'm going to use that in my uh, sludge army, Mike, when we're putting those together. I was 
good use of those. Uh, the model quality in the box. Let's let's get into it. Let's delve. Uh, when you buy the game, you're gonna get like some guys that are like like that. I'm like one foot on the base, um, kind of facing the wrong way. You're gonna need a little work. You can play out of the box. You don't have to assemble anything. Just know that if you're used to buying miniature games, you might want to give some of the hot water treatment and re-glue a little bit. Um, so do, do some of that. You don't have to really clean them. They're just, they're, they're that PVC kind of plastic, um, the, the bendy kind of plastic. But hot water works well with them. They come on the square, like flagstone kind of bases. So that looks kind of cool. Um, I believe, a lot of people use those same models in Kings of War skirmish as well, because people like to use those bases that kind of feel like a Mordheim or fantasy kind of setting there. Um, model wise though, if you're used to games workshop, you're not going to see that. You're going to see the Mantic level quality. Um, would you guys say that Mantic's models in 2020 are much better than the models that come in this game from five years before? Oh yeah, for sure. I haven't bought a Mantic model in a long time, so okay. I can't Mike, you, you st so Mike, you've bought the um, what's been the newest release that you've gotten? Uh, I've or gotten Kings a few, of War, Kings of War stuff that's resin, and the resins are really good. They're resin, so okay. if you like resins, fine. But I'm not a fan. Yeah. Uh, the plastics though are really good. The real hard plastics. I've got the Abyssal Dwarves, the Ratkin, yeah. and the Goblins. All of those are excellent kits. There's again, they're not. Okay. They're they're the kinds of kits though. They're so, they're like crossbow kits where they've got the arms. You got to glue those on. So it's not the intricate poses that you're getting in some Age of Sigmar ones. But you know, if you want a kit that you can make goblins that are either shooters or spearmen, they're there. So. <laughs> And then you get extra arms if you want to use those. Uh, um, yeah, I think if you're used to like Descent, let's say you play Descent and you get th those models that come in Descent are pretty good. They're single pose. There's no, no work needs to be done except for sometimes some of the bases are a little warped. So you might have to hot water the bases to get them lay flat. But if you're used to that, I think you'll be okay with these. If you are only used to Games Workshop, you're going to probably like initially be disappointed at the models, but that's just, it is what it is. I mean, that's not, you know, so I think where you come from before you play this game, I think helps. If you are a Mantic fan of other games, and I think you'll, be, you'll fit right in and be right at home with this. So I just wanted to kind of talk about that. Um, when you're playing the game, you can easily just play this right out of the box. And then if you finish the first uh, first, the main box set game, you can buy one of the five or so expansions. Um, I think you're supposed to play in order. I don't know if it really matters. Um, I just got them all for the cards, um, for like the weapons and uh, abilities and that kind of stuff, and um, you know, uh, spells and all that. But I believe your idea is supposed to build up and have the dragon you fight at the end kind of thing. Spoilers. There, sorry. Um, every time you buy a new expansion, you get more hero models, and more bad guys. So this, the main one is the undead one. There's an orc-based one. There's a, an abyssal slash chaos for Games Workshop fans based one. Um, there is, there's one other one I forgot, um, one other bad guy uh, oriented one, but colored plastic. So all the heroes are blue. All the bad guys are one color. Orcs are green, undead are bone, Abyssals are red, so that's kind of cool. If you don't want to paint them, you don't have to. You can. That's very uh, forward-looking of them in 2015. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I think so. Um, that was something that a lot of board dungeon crawls never did. It was gray across the board. So if you want to paint them, great. But if not, gray on gray. Deal with it. They went, they said, no, no, we're going to do colored plastic. Um, I don't even think Games Workshop was doing colored plastic then. No. Maybe they had easy-to-build kits. But it, but it wasn't colored plastic for the army. It was colored plastic just, I don't know, to denote easy to build. I don't, I don't remember. Yeah, it was like, uh, I mean? like Underworlds was, was the first time I remember reason, it. But... Warhammer Underworld, the Shades Pyre yeah, stuff yeah. like that. That's the first time I remember yeah, so them they, specifically yeah. doing it. 
Yeah, and that was, that was, you're right. That was for, for the, whatever race you're playing. It made sense. So I think that um, it was nice to do that in Dungeon Saga, and knowing that not everyone's going to play. So I'm going to throw everything back in the same box that came in. It's a cool box, great box. I'll put it back on the shelf. Whereas some will keep all the components in the box and the models, because you painted them, will probably be stored in foam or, or some, some other method. Or they'll buy one of those expensive bespoke battle foam for the board games that yeah. holds everything and all the miniatures in foam. You see, they sometimes do that, and it fits right yeah. in the box. Yeah. yeah. Just don't buy anything extra. Yeah. Yeah, don't buy Works any expansion, or you're screwed. Works out yeah. great, unless you back the Kickstarter and got two of everything. Well, that's only for insane people. <laughs> hey, I still have three shark men in Dreadball, so what are you talking about, you know? Is that <laughs> when they just threw a whole bunch in at the end? Yeah, yeah you just – it was like, you know, how Pat Oswald has – the bit about the the bowl at KFC is just the whole left side of the menu swiped into a bowl. <laughs> That's what you know. The second Dreadball Kickstarter was just um, Dungeon Saga. Um, I don't remember what I backed it at. I, I think I just got the main game and maybe one expense. It was hundred bucks, I think. I don't remember. Was it um, the sweet spot bid, as everyone calls it? I think so. I don't think it was that. It was that. I think it was a hundred bucks. I don't, I don't think I spent anything more than a hundred on it. Um, the one thing I want to make note of is. When I backed that level, it came with the Adventurer's Companion book, which is a hardcover book. And I'm like, cool. This is like, if you played Warhammer Quest, they had the role play book, which is the, the bestiary or bestiary, if you will. You know, cool. I'm going to see that. That hardcover book, every page is fucked up because it says, turn to page XX. They did not change the XX over to the actual page numbers before they went to print on the hardcover book. Um, I will tell you that I never cared because I just had the game and never really got into it. By the time I got into this game, it was really when lockdown started. I asked Heather if she wanted to play, like, let's, you know, let's just play a bunch. I'll make some, make up some scenarios. So I actually bought them this box, which I'm now going to say is an essential buy for this. I think you need the base game. And I think you should buy this game, this, or this box with it. This is the Adventurer's Companion. You get, the, a soft cover version of that book, but it's, it's correct. It's not, it's not messed you gotta up. You've got to buy this to get um, the correct one. Right. Yeah, you get the hardcover wrong in the Kickstarter or the soft cover right in this one. But what I like about this one is it's another box, which means it is another cool book. And in this one, you're going to have a bunch of terrain, like, you know, bookshelves and chairs, all that. What I liked about it, the main reason it's a shit ton of cards for the game. So, you know, this many spells, um, this many items, or this, it's, and it's, for me, it was cool because I like using cards in games. I like saying, all right, you're, you've reached the tavern. I'm going to flip over three at random. And then these two that are always there, let's say, and here's what you get to buy. Here's what you get to trade for. Here's what you get to whatever for. Um, you can do that. So you go into town between games and I just like the idea like, all right, um, your wizard's going to learn a spell. Um, you can either have one chosen one or two random one. And having cards handy to do all that kind of stuff, it's, it's awesome. I don't want to go through a book and then say, you got to write all this down. I'd rather just give you the card. You put the card with your sheet and then put it on the card. It. Put it on the card. Um, Descent does that. Uh, Imperial Assault does that. All the um, board game related dungeon call games do that. Kingdom so Death Monster want, does that. Yeah, I want this to do that. And so for me, I bought all the expansions because I wanted the cards with it. I don't, I actually sold 99% uh, of the models, not for a lot. Um, I dropped them off at my local game store auction. I'm like, whatever you can get for it. And I was probably like 20 bucks for it. Minimum bid, zero. If, yeah, if you're, if you're doing the, the count at home for how many models based on how much you spend, uh, it's pretty good. It's like five, five to one one dollar i think we call that the sue bill scale <laughs> that's right yeah very sue bill um a lot of models i didn't want them because i'm going to use warhammer models you, so you're not a hobo that, you want right, the best well here's here's how i look at it if i have warhammer underworlds 10 different war bands and i have uh war cry a couple of war bands in there and they're all painted. Some I painted, some I bought painted. Why the fuck wouldn't I want to use that? Multi-purpose episode, Pachow, right there, anyone. Why would I not? Like, 
why would I not want to use? I didn't the... even think of Warcry. There's so many like good, like their regular models make great characters. You got your barbarians, you got your rogues, and oh, it's great. And shit. I bought, yeah. I bought a nicely painted iron golem warband for like sixty bucks, and it's gotten so much use in that game and this game um, because they're awesome, just bad guys, um, henchmen type bad guys. It's or great. if you want a barbarian, um, they'd be great. Yeah, totally. It's the, there's Games Workshop has so many great models. So I just for me, I call my version Dungeon Hammer, which is the same. It's the same core rules. I didn't change the core rules. I tweak some of the skills and the stats are a little tweaked as well. Um, like I have some that are same. So the few models I kept, by the way, I kept the Maw Beasts. I kept whatever the Chaos Hound, or Abyssal Hounds are called. I forgot what they're called. Um, I kept the, the uh, Moloch and I kept the Zombie Troll. And that was it. Um, the rest I have good Warhammer based models I want to use for this game. But those I was like, you know, there isn't really, I mean, there isn't really an orc beast, I don't think. So I was like, eh, Maw Beast is cool for that or whatever. So I kept those. For the most part, though, it's all Warhammer models that I'm using. So would you say you've taken the best of both worlds? I'm going to say something crazy that Mantic has better rules as a whole than Games Workshop. Yeah, I, and Games I Workshop agree. as a whole has better mo models, so you've combined both of best best of both worlds. I don't I, think that's. Don't, you don't think you, you think yeah. GW's rules are better than Mantic's? No, I don't think what you said is crazy. Okay. Oh okay. yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree with that too. <laughs> and, I and, and I am not a Mantic fanboy. I will mock them more than most. You but, well, you store your models in Tupperware, so yeah. we know how much you care. <laughs> uh, and and some models I painted, I still store in Tupperware. I um, I have not played. Did you guys ever play the new Warhammer Quest from Games Workshop? Oh, the Silver Tower. Yeah, and uh, well, there's two. So, so the first one came out, and right off the bat, I I completely prejudged it because I'm like, this doesn't look like Warhammer Quest. No thanks, because it didn't look like it. No. Then they came out with the second one, and that looks like it's right. an, you it know, the other down one, earth setting yeah yeah it looked like a like it looks just looked weird like almost like a cosmic kind of look to it yeah the second one looked normal um i never played either one have you guys tried it or no i bought it and put together miniatures and never played a game yeah i bought the second one because the miniatures were really good again because a lot of them were nurgle and never really read i skimmed the rules but i never played it did, did you skim it enough to know, is it like the old Warhammer request or no? I don't remember, I'll be honest. Okay. Now I'm kind, of, I'm kind of curious. I, I should, I'm going to dig it up and look at it and see what yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like. I, I, I bring it up because of the discussion that Viron started of, you know, if as a whole, Mantic has tighter rules. Mm -hmm. I'm curious because as in our Warhammer Underworlds episode, Chow, the only game so far in history that's achieved a five from one of us, um, there's no better rules than that one. Games Workshop reached their peak as far as rules in that. Mantic is still not at that level, in my opinion. But Dungeon Saga is better rules than Old Warhammer Quest. Mm -hmm. uh, Dead Zone is better rules than Necromunda. Um, Kings of War is better rules than Age of Sigmar. Yeah, Dreadball, Blood Bowl. I, I don't want to start a riot here, but we know how half the room feels. Uh, maybe maybe three quarters of the room. Uh, but to be fair, Dreadball is not a party game. So, no, it is not a party game. Uh, <laughs> Blood Bowl is if you are Brian Extreme Mitchell Goosh, if you are. Um, but no, you're you're right though. It, it's it, the rules are tight. They're very simple. Um, like you're rolling dice. The bad guy rolls dice, and then you cancel things out, and it's like. It, it's it's so easy that we can just focus on having a good time. You can play this game uh, with people at a party, like a party game if you're drinking. You know what I mean? There's not, you're never going to need to open the book. You're just having fun with it. It's it's super easy. Uh, the scenarios that come in all the game, all the expansions, they're fine. Like, they're nothing's going to like wow you, but they're they're fine. They tell you how to set up. Use these board sections, read a little bit of fluff, and put the bad guys here, and you guys set up here. Um, there's a couple that give some additional things. Like I remember there was one where it talked about 
finding the four pieces of like the Banshee's heart, I think, to make her rest in peace finally. So there's a few that they kind of put a little extra work into it. And there's some that are just hack and slash, do whatever, get to the end. Um, I just wanted to make it all my own because that's more my style with it. But I can see why people would want to keep playing. I, I, I've checked the Dungeon Saga Facebook group. People are still playing it now to this day. There's not a lot, there's no really new releases lately. There's not really a ton of discussion, but I can tell people are playing it. Um, I've noticed it's a lot of kind of like extreme described about Gauntlet. It's a lot of dad showing it to the kids and this being a family's game. That's kind of cool. Um, you don't always get that with miniature games where the family gets to play. This one has that. Um, so um, the other thing I want to throw out there before we get to our kind of pros and cons and other discussion with it. Um, Biron, you mentioned about taking the best of everything. The other thing is because I don't like the tiles and also the tiles are small by today's standards. They're like old school, like D&D &D tiles. And I'm using Games Workshop models. And guess what? Games Workshop doesn't even have any models. Almost, almost no models now are on the small bases. So I actually did a, um, I ordered some, a 3D print. It's not Dwarven Forge, but it is like great value brand Dwarven Forge. Where, but I can link them all together. They're like snap, snap kits. I'll, I'll grab a piece. All right, maybe I have one down here. Um, but you can link them all together. It's got the walls and all that kind of thing. But I had the guy printed at 32 millimeter instead of 28. That's something that Dwarven Forge doesn't do. They only, they're, they're great stuff, but it is, you got to know you're using small models. So I want to throw this out there to anyone that if you're looking for a game to use GW, Warhammer Fantasy, Age of Sigmar models, uh, know that you're going to want to pay extra close attention to what you play on because they're almost always going to be hanging over the edge. And facing in this game actually matters. You have a rear and, you know, it's minus one when you're you know, from the rear. So it's, you want to make sure, I guess, if you're using other things to make your own hodgepodge of a game like I did, make sure you play on a proper surface if you're doing that. Um, what do you guys really like about this game, the pros? Who wants to start? Extreme? Uh, the rule set. Um, the rule, how easy it is to learn how to play the game. Uh, simple game that's still fun to play. You still have decision making. You still have cool stuff going on. Um, but you don't have to spend a whole lot of time, I don't know, remembering rules. Um, I think that's my biggest pro is that the game itself is really solid rules wise. Yeah. Would you be and the satisfied with just the box? The box. Another yeah. You know, you knew it was going to come up anyway. So I appreciate you trying to get dibs on calling dibs on the box. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> that was the only thing I had. Damn it. Yeah, that's, um, I mean, like, come on, like, this is, I mean, the only thing that can make it better would be like magnets here, keeping it close, yeah. so you don't have an issue like I had at the beginning of the show. Um, it's a great box, though, and they're all good. Like, I kept all the, even though the expansion that I bought, I have only the cards. I kept the rule books for them, too, just in case there was a piece that I wanted to take from a, a concept or whatever, but I kept the car, I kept the box to store things in. So now I have, you know, uh, six boxes that to fit a bunch of pieces for my 3D, uh, 3D uh, dungeon in there. Um, Mike, what are your pros for Dungeon Saga? I liked how the Overlord, the, the bad guy, if you have it, has a card mechanic and that's also your clock. So mm -hmm. it isn't, so there is a time Great element point. with it, and you are trying to, you can't dally, let's put it that way. And yeah. uh, I thought that was really, at the time, I thought it was really clever. I, and, uh, That's a great one. actually Thanks for made it, uh, if you're the overlord, I, I thought that, because that, that was usually my role whenever I was, the few times I played it, I was always that person. It kind of helped the other people, but I was, there still was that element of, you got to do this or I'm going to win, you know, and, yeah. And also, you can win. Yeah, great if you're points. the overlord, um, you can win, but but not be a dick about it. You know, it's like eh, the card, the time ran out. I win. So yeah. right, <laughs> right, yeah. If you kill everybody, you're kind of an asshole. But yeah. if if the dungeon collapsed because because you ran out of card, because when you you have an overlord deck, 
and the missions that are come stock in the book and in the expansion tell you you get X amount of cards and you draw X amount per turn. Uh, when you get to the last, when you flip your last one, the heroes get one more one more round. It's it's when you can't flip anymore. So it is an element of don't dilly dally. Yes, I know there's treasure there, and I should probably not bash the door open and get it. But what if I don't bash the door in this turn and I waste the whole turn? Or what you know? Or this it's got uh, this has a ward uh, lock on this, and then the wizard to open this door. So it makes you have to decide what you want to do. And if you're playing linked adventures where you build up, sometimes it happens. You know, you, you, if you get greedy, you might not finish the adventure. Or if you split up to try to get everything, that might be your downfall when you should have stayed together. So I, great point about that. It, it does allow you an out as the overlord to say, sorry, like, guys, I tried. I, I, I tried to, you know, I tried to help you out, you know. So it gives you that, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, I think that that is a cool mechanic. Besides the easy to use way of attacking and shooting and magic, um, you know, you're refreshing cards. The Overlord cards are, are good for that as well. Good point. Um, Biron, you've played before, right? I played once many years ago, and I, the only thing I remember is because Mike brought up the time mechanic with the Overlord. Um, it, did you play at Drakstar? No, I played at my house, and Todd ran it. Oh, okay. Ragnar Todd. Yeah. From Link to uh, his Rosa store in the description Hello. below. Ragnargames.com. <laughs> like, Was he using my copy of the game? I think he had a copy. Yeah, he's, um, he's got. Yeah. <laughs> While Todd hates Kickstarter, he does sometimes pledge it or gets it for free because he bitches. He used to bitch to Joe Neat and get free stuff all the time. I know, Biron, you like to sneak stuff on the shelves at Grognard because this looks like a book. Could you fit it in Todd's house somewhere? Like on his, like by his yearbook? It would, it would stick out because all of his books are about how atheism is cool and I love the earth and Obama is the greatest and then Dungeon Saga, you'd see it. Okay. I got to check out Obama is the greatest. I don't know that was the name of it. Uh, it was new book. Um, so um, over to me for pros, um, agree with what these guys said. Um, you know, when you get the, Mantic's done a good job with, with <coughs> you know, I don't well, remember yeah, the, what comes in the box. It's become their thing that yeah. everyone agrees on that Mantic's good at is making terrain. Yeah. Terrain crates is found at every game store. Yeah. You know, if, you're, if you have a game store that sells more than magic, um, they have, the terrain crate. So I've got some of them. Some came in this box. If you want to put your friends through a table, you can do that as well. Um, they did a great job with all that. Uh, rule set was tight. I know that um, as time went on, there was like some FAQs. And I think Jake was one of those where he, would, he had a contract to do the game. And it's like, all right, that's it. See ya. We're, we're close, closing the fake book on this one, guys. Um, but it, it's so easy that everything's either self-explanatory or just come to an agreement, guys. What, if, you don't, if you don't agree what nimble one does, just whatever. Say you need a six and you dodge out, whatever. Like, even when there's a conflict, if you, you find that in the rules, you get past it so quickly. It is, even, like I said, so even when you do come across that, you're like, I, I think they kind of mean this. Okay, let's all agree. Now, having an overlord player makes those agreements a lot easier. But um, you can play. I've never played the non-Overlord version. Inside that Adventurer's Companion box is a good sized deck that you flip over that says what comes out, where do they do, where do they go, what do they do? It is in there. Um, if anyone's done that with this game, I'd love for you to comment below. I want to check out your experience with that. Um, I've never done it, but it is in there. And it comes in that. Like I said, I would put that as an essential purchase. So if you have the game and you think you might play one a little more, Add that in there, the Adventurer's Companion, because of all that extra stuff it comes with. Um, it's just kind of cool to have, you know, inside that book, you know, you can say, well, what if I want to have, create my own characters? You have your classes in there. You have your races. You have um, abilities that are outside of the normal book. Um, briefly talk about spells because there's a shit ton of spell cards. There's like 10 different schools of magic on there. 
Um, and they got bad, you know, bad guys in there. You can add your own. Um, if anyone wants to see mine, if they want to view more, message me and I'll show you what, what I came up with in there. But there's just so much to like about the game if you're looking for a basic dungeon crawler to play with, you know, people that may not want a ton of rules and just want to have some fun. They want to play Gauntlet. That. Exactly. If people want to play Gauntlet. Play... This is the best version of Gauntlet on the tabletop. You know, Gauntlet is a game on the video game that you don't need any expertise in playing. Run away from the bad guys. Try to kill some, but run away from other ones. And then do the, do the stuff and get to the end. Like, that's, that describes all of these kind of games. So uh, this has all that, all those elements. I think it's one of, it, it might be the, the best Mantic game in my eyes. Um, they have great rules. I mean, it's, it's not a perfect game because of, you know, some quality issues. But from a rule standpoint, it's, it's the best one out there if you're looking for this, in my opinion. Um, Cons of it, we'll go in the same order. Extreme. Um, everything that's not rules. Yeah. Uh, the models, the component quality, um, the editing of the rule books. Uh, you mentioned the big one with the Adventures Community and the page numbers, but there were se several others too. I remember they had like a, a couple of small sheets of corrections that came with the game that you were supposed to slip into certain pages. Um, so it's overall that. quality, just not good. And like you mentioned the models too, like being bent, which isn't a big deal for miniature gamers, but they were targeting this towards like people that weren't miniature gamers, board Normies. gamers. Yeah. yeah, so it becomes a huge deal for them. Like, wait, so this skeleton is like laying down, I have to put him in hot water and bend it. What the hell is going on? So yeah, so quality in general would be my con. Yeah, agreed. Mike? Hey. They addressed some of that when they came out with the uh, Hellboy game, because the, the miniatures actually had, the box actually had slots for all the miniatures. Oh, like they did for uh, for The Walking Dead. Yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah. The Walking Dead did the same thing too, yeah. So yeah. Uh, that actually, I, I, I yeah. I. They should re-release in that kind of a format. They'll never do. Yeah, I know. But it'd be cool if they did. Yeah. Because, yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't think... Um, I don't think they've done any, I mean, have they ever, I don't even think they've come out with anything for this game in a long time. I think it's not, it's on the website, um, so it's not dead, um, but it is not in there. I, I, don't, I don't think so, if there's Mantic fans out there, but I mean, it, they kind of, in a weird way, you're, Mike, you mentioned about how Kings of War, these other, these models are getting better and better. It would be kind of cool to see a re-release of some stuff, you know? Oh yeah. So, I think you if you have other models you like to use, you can just you know use them anyway, Mantic or other companies. Well, even if they went the route of uh, remember the pre-painted, the horribly pre-painted um, D and D minis, that kind of quality. If they had a, if those were in the box, I think it had been gone over much better. Even or for normies. Another idea they could do, since they have multiple fantasy games, they could have a, like a wave of your rats that come out and have rats for Kings of War, rats for whatever the skirmish game, I always forget the name of it is. And okay. then have like, yes, Vanguard. And then just have a supplement for Dungeon Saga with rats too. So you have like a whole rat wave coming out. Yeah, just throw like a card in the box of miniatures for use in Dungeon Saga? Yeah, whatever. And so that way you're supporting three different games and you're encouraging crossover play too. So now instead of just getting into Kings of War, I already have crap for this other game. I'll buy a little bit more. I could be into that too. There's plenty of things. I, I, see, I see your idea and we'll let them take it further. They're already saying using rats in both sci-fi and Kings of War. They've already said that in their last update. So that makes that idea even better of, you know, I mean, could you imagine you get a VHS box which on its own is already pretty solid. I mean, yep. who doesn't want to add a nice, you know, you're already going to add fake books to your collection. Why not add fake movies? Mm -hmm. You know, say, you know, Billy's eighth birthday, and then like cross it out and say, Dungeon Saga on there. Um, inside the box, wouldn't it be cool to have, like you said, Biron, a card for everything? It's a great idea. You know, everyone's going to buy it because if you play one, you're going to, you need it. And it might make you try other ones as well. 
Excellent. You could use these rats in Tar Sag, for example. Yeah, this Star Saga, or if you are, um, what is it? What's the aspect ratio? If it's four not, to three, four three aspect ratio. You're, you're in four to three and didn't adjust. It's Tar Sag, but if it's <laughs> the four, panda scan it's version, <laughs> right? You got to flip the disc over for the for that version. Yeah. Um, so that's their sci-fi. A dungeon crawler i've never tried it but i would imagine it's i don't know i mean i, I don't know if they took some of these same elements um it, it going you know, to my negatives it, you tell me if dungeon sucks because i when i played it i didn't have this issue um when todd brought it over but we i saw people playing it at tar sag at adepticon and the things were bowed and every time they moved a character the the hallway would start spinning because it would pivot on the middle because it bowed out a little bit and it would start spitting. Are these at least staying flat or are they warping? That's actually part of the game because the gravity control is That's going right. away. <laughs> well, Sorry. Extreme asked for some AI in there. I mean, what what is better <laughs> than actual physical things happening in the game? Yeah. Um, and I, I think that, that should be part of it. You didn't know this castle was built on a hill? You didn't know that before you st set foot in here? What's wrong with you? Did you see it's Harry like, Potter no. with the stairways moving around? It's like that. <laughs> you move, like, guys, let's check out this one. No! <laughs> the Gorka Marker rule. Model. If you fall off, you're dead. Yeah, of course. The model slides. <laughs> if he falls face forward, he's dead. Face back, he's just stunned, we'll say. Uh, yeah, I think, um, <laughs> you know, uh, the co components. Um, mine are a little warped. They're not that bad though. Um, I just, they just move. They, they move around too much. It's not the warping. It's the, why didn't we puzzle piece this shit? That's well, what it should. we glazed it to protect it, but we used a Teflon coating. So they're super slippery. Yeah. Super slippery. Yeah. Just, I mean, if you spill a drink on it, it's still gonna mess yeah. up. If you ask Ronnie, he'll say, if we did a puzzle piece on this stuff, it's a bad example because it's kind of a small piece, but he say, well, then there's only, there's less amount of combinations to, to do. Because if you, everything's a separate piece, this could be here, this could be here. And what does that add yeah, to the game, Ryan? but also who Nothing. cares? It doesn't add anything. Zero, zero. And that's what anything. I'll say about like, you look at, um, Descent has puzzle pieces, right? Descent is the puzzle pieces. Right. Their scenery. Descent and Imperial Assault are both puzzle pieces. They're really, um, what usually, one side is one, this is for Imperial Assault or Descent. One side is one look, the other side's another look. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have one of two places we do stuff at. Okay. That's Sounds fine. like an opportunity to release more scenery packs to me and make more money. You know, there, there's no good reason, in my opinion, to, to, to have not be puzzle piece, especially when you are going with very specific, the Abyssal one is all flames because there's an ability where you can walk through lava and not get hurt um so if you're already saying they're so themed that we're going to put shit on there that affect the game then you could have puzzle pieced it because now we're not going to hodgepodge this in there we're going to use the actual ones because that's part of the mission so it, they even got to the point where it went against the reason you didn't puzzle piece for me that's actually number one con in this one is the is, is the, the the tiles my guess is it was a cost thing, is more than anything. Totally. Had to do it. Had to do it. Um, there's still, I will tell you this. Um, now, again, I haven't used them much, so I can't tell you if after use they've, they've frayed out. But there is that vinyl coating that some cards have, like that, not vinyl, like it's, I'm like a like thread looking, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Um, it does have like that. Like a linen, a linen finish. Yeah, right. It has that. And, you know, Space Hulk from Games Workshop didn't have that. That was straight gloss. And if you put the things in over and over again, they eventually pull up. So they, they did do that, which leads me to believe there was some level of quality control with these. But I think the decision, I mean, at least according to Ronnie, was the, well, we want you to be able to do whatever you want with these pieces. So why inhibit ourselves with where the puzzle piece goes? I just, um, that's, that's the number one con. Number two are the models. Um, models aren't that bad, but they're, they're okay for a board game. Uh, I just want more at this point. If you look in the rule book and look online, they still look awesome when a, an awesome painter paints them. Like when 
when you get a great painter to paint something that I say is maybe not a good model, that's totally fine. That leads me to believe that in the right person's hands, this can be a beautiful looking set of models. But in the average Joe's hands, they're just kind of like, eh. Whereas Games Workshop, we can, we can get by and they actually look decent on the tabletop, you know, when you use the, paint those models, regardless of skill level. So I do find that, like if you really want nicely painted stuff, have a good painter do them because they don't, they, there's still that kind of that mushy PVC plastic board game feel to them. Um, and then yeah, out of the box, you might need a little, they might need a shower, you know, the skeleton might be not only on one foot, but also sleeping. You raise the bed in the game, raise it before the game as well. Bring him, bring him up here. Rise from your gra grave, as they say in Altered Beast. More uh, do they say movie. that or do they say wise from your grave? They say rise from your grave. G-W-A-V-E is the word, grave. Uh, yeah, Other, that's my only two issues with it. Um, I don't, I don't use the, the scenario packs for the scenarios. I use them for, for the other stuff, but they're actually okay. Like all of them are, are pretty good. If you're not the type that you want to, you just want to, you know, like I said, the dad with the kids, you want to read like a half a page of fluff, you know, give you a little bit of conflict, a little bit of what's going on, of what little foreshadowing of the next one. They have all that. It's great. Do you want to add even more and do uh, D and D light? You can do that too with this rule set. This comp, if you want to use, you know, role playing elements, but then this for combat, you can easily do that. And it works great for that. So I, my only cons, Bear, I skipped you for cons. What, and Mike, did I skip you for cons or did you have some? Yeah, most of it. Besides the model. The only other con is mm -hmm. all of the minis are on 25 millimeter square bases. And if you were going to try to use those minis for like, Vanguard, the square is too big. Because mm -hmm. most of the yeah. minis in Vanguard are on 20 mils, not the 25s. That's a I didn't even very, very minor point that I don't think really makes yeah. sense. Because so. Kings of War, if you're if you're using models and not multi-basing, you're right. Yeah. Only like the bigger, like orcs, you know, the, the bigger yeah, 25, but average guys. Yeah. Because when I use uh, some of my yeah. some of the abyssals, when I like the the flame bearers, uh, they're going to be a freak in Kings of War. I had to pop them off the base, and they were really well glued on. The ones that were glued on were really well glued on, and I cut my finger open uh, slicing mm -hmm. it off because it was so well glued on there. Because I had to take it off the twenty five to put on the twenty. So yeah. very very minor. Well, you I don't think. That's a, yeah, it's a, a valid point though. Valid point uh, with um, the mo with multi-purpose models. Um, the bigger ones are on forties because they take up four squares. Um, I will tell you what I did. I actually took anything that's big in the game, um, like a zombie troll, Moloch. I actually put everything on thirty-two square circles, no matter what. No matter what you are, you are on that or smaller. I think like some of the models are small, but I mean, even my big guy, cause I didn't want to do the whole, I'm, me, being, me using a 3D dungeon, I didn't have the real estate to sacrifice to say, you're going to take up a four spot. Cause then it becomes, there's certain times nobody could ever get around somebody unless you, you kill them or it's a, a corridor. So I did that for my purpose, but you're right, Mike. And, you know, base size there, but the bigger ones are on fours and, you know, you still have the, the four behind them that will be their, their rear arc on there. Um, any other cons for the game besides um, models and product, uh, you know, really? Components, just generally components, I would say, except for that, like the scenery stuff that they've gotten really good at doing lately. Yeah, uh, the treasure chests are good that come in the game. Um, all that stuff is awesome. It really is. It's, uh, and it's even colored. You don't even have to paint the gold gold if you don't want to. Um, it could be the like, you know, most of the furniture is brown, so it can be the last thing you get to if you are a painter. You just use it as is because as is works great. Well, if so, you're a Dungeons and Dragons player, that stuff's great for cross use. It is. It is awesome. It really is. It's um, you know, it even has 
you know, there's doors that come in there that you can use, um, but everything, even a nice little throne. I can sit on this. I'm going to sit on this right now. And go up your butt. Yeah. Actually, right that's now. what this piece is for. That's what I use this one for. That's nice. It's got the runes and everything. My butt likes the runes. Uh, Dungeon Saga, Dwarf King's Quest, great game. Uh, get the Adventures Companion if you want to take it further and get like one of five other expansion packs if you want to go further than that. Orcs, Abyssals, Dragon, there's all kinds of extra ones. Each one has two to four extra characters as well in there, which is pretty cool. Uh, anything else we should cover on this one? No? Okay. Let's go to our ratings for this one. How many Slurpees? That's our rating system in this, in this show. Uh, what does a Slurpee mean? I don't know. A Slurpee is different depending on the person. Biron has no, what's, what's the word? No, you have no criteria, basically. Right? Changes week to week. It's just how, it's how you feel. It's your, yours is feeling, you know. As some people might say during a heated election time, fuck your feelings. But, you know. Facts don't care about them, I would say. That's right. But you will, you will give a Slurpee rating based on your feelings. I try to have a couple of things I look for, but that's just me. Uh, let's do our ratings. I'll start. I'm going to go four Slurpees. Would love to go. Would love to go higher, but if I'm playing a version that I had to tweak to my interests, there's no way I can go higher. But it is a phenomenal rule set and a great starting point for any dungeon crawl that you want to take further to the next level. Uh, next, let's go Valdric. Probably next experienced. Yeah, I would also give it four. Again, uh, like you said, if you're in it for a dungeon crawl game, everything is there. Uh, if you have other minis that you'd rather substitute, you can, uh, but you don't have to. Uh, again, the, the knockdowns are, again, like you said, component quality a little bit but it, and the editing, but it is a really, really tight, fun rule set. Uh, extreme. I'm going to give it a three. I do think it is a great rule set and a good starting point, but as a complete game, I think everything else um, kind of sucks. Hey, curious, have you tried the AI deck at all or, or never? No. Okay. Just wondering. Um, Biron? I was hovering between a three and a 3.5, but then I realized that if you two give it a four, and both me and Brian give it a three, it makes it a 3.5. So I'm going three. Are you saying much like your vote in Illinois, your vote doesn't matter? Right. Yeah. Okay. Just checking. So that's, I kind of like the way that works. The least experienced person, they, they do matter less. Right. That's how it goes. I'm not as engaged in this process because I haven't played this game. So my vote should count for less. Uh, but it made it a perfect 3.5. Here we go. And there it is. Or there, there it is. It's, uh, it's like the old Encyclopedia Britannica guys. Like, let's see that phone number. <sighs> Excellent. <laughs> um, maybe one and and if it set. was drawn by Mantic, it would say insert phone number here instead of actual phone number. <laughs> <laughs> it would say, it would have the brackets and then XXX, 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 XXX. <laughs> It wouldn't have the dashes, though, because that requires some standardization. It would just yeah. be X's. Um, so if you like this show, I encourage you to watch the other ones. You know, when you're looking on the right and it has this other, it's probably got like a Joe Rogan one. It's probably got like some whatever, you know, maybe a couple hours in there, too. Give it a try. If you like Mantic, we got Kings of War. We got Dreadball. We got Dead Zone. This is, I mean... The only company we've had four games from so far, or GW we've done. I guess Blood Bowl, 40K. Yeah, we've done four. Yeah. Underworlds. Blitz Bowl. War, and Warcry. And Blitz Bowl. Bowl. We have not done Age of Sigma yet, but five for that. But four episodes on Mantic Games. There's definitely a lot there if you are a fan. Follow on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at Zlurpcast. We have a Facebook group called Zlurpcast Discussion. Check that out. And once again, if you want to get some cool merch, I mean, I have 
posters, you guys. So, somewhere I had coasters. Oh, here it is. Look at this. I'm not even like, I haven't even put a drink on these yet. By the way, these are warping too, a little bit. I haven't, I, I haven't put a drink on it yet. That's how valuable those are to me. We got stickers. Stickers, you guys. Whatever you're watching this on, you know it could use a sticker on it right on there. Check it out, zlurpcast.net. Otherwise, that's all we have for today. It's been fun. Bye. Brought to you by Nuffles. Bet you can't just roll a one.